Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some multiple choice problems that you will find on page number 73. Please turn to it, page number 73, the very first problem that you see there, number 72. If at the end of the video you find this helpful and if you would like to work with me, if you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you ready for the exam, you can reach me at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's take a look at it. Number first, 70, number 72, we have a semicircle. We have a semicircle, we are told, with radius of six feet and the question is what is the height what is the height of the archway two feet from the center two feet from the center let's draw archway here it's a semicircle. We are told that this distance here is six feet. The radius is six feet. And the question is, what is the height of the archway exactly two feet from the center? So this distance right here is two feet. And our job is to find this guy, the height of the archway. This is the radius. Obviously, we know it is six feet. It's a very simple, very straightforward thing. We know we know the hypotenuse. Let's plot it the other way around. Let's plot it the other way around, the radius, it will make it easier. So right here is the radius, it is 6 feet, this is what we're looking for, this is 2. And this of course is the right angle. As I said, very straightforward, very simple problem, let's take a look at it. So, the radius is 6 feet, so 6 squared has to equal x squared plus 2 squared, and that's all it is x squared is simply 36 minus 4 which is 32 and therefore x is square root of 32 square root of 32 which of course which of course is simply 2 times 16 is simply 4 rather 2 times 16 which is simply 4 times root 2 4 times root 2 and that's the answer choice D as a choice D. The reason reason I got a little lost here in this part here, the reason I got a little lost here, because that is not how I was going to do it. I changed my mind at the last second. This is not how I would have done it. The way I was going to do it is that the square root of 6, the square root of 6, we know is the square, square root of 32, the square root of 32, we know is less than 6, but it is more than 5. The answer is, the answer is not, answer is not the, uh, Answer is not, if you look at the answer choices, answer is not E because E is 6, it's not 36, and obviously it's not 3, which is number C. So the answer is D. I wasn't going to actually do it out. Next one, number number 30, number 72, number 73. Sometimes it's easier just to take the shortcut that doing the actual thing out because nobody's asking for us we simply have to, we simply have to be recognize the right answer we don't care what the right answer is as long as you can recognize that that is the right answer the c was 3 and e is 6 it's not 3 it's not definitely 6 it's got to be d number 73 here we have a harvest which is 350 bushes we are told as I always remind you that you must have the book in front of you, otherwise you cannot follow the work because I take a lot of shortcuts. We have a harvest of 350, 350 bushels. We are told that X trees, X trees yielded 10 bushels, 10 bushels, am I, pronouncing, am I spelling it correctly, bushels each, 10 bushels each. The question is, what fraction of the yield K 
came from came from these three these trees these x trees that we're talking about again it's very straightforward since we have x trees since we have x trees and each one of them has gave us 10 bushels obviously we have 10 times x bushel from these trees the total total yield was 350 total yield was total yield was 350 there you go the question was what fraction of the yield came from these trees the answer is a 35th of it x x over 35 rather not 35th 35th of x how many trees we have there next one, number 74 number 74 Number 74 says that the denominator is 16 more than numerator. We have a fraction, denominator we are told is 16 more than numerator. We are also told that the fraction, we are also told that fraction equals 80%. The question simply is, what is the denominator? Keep in mind that it is the denominator we are looking for. So when you finish the work, always make sure that you're not stopping at the numerator because that answer choice is also going to, that number is also going to be one of the answer choices. Let's set it up. Again, there's not much to it. So here's our, here's our fraction, numerator over denominator, numerator over denominator, and denominator we are told is 16 more than numerator. So whatever the numerator is, denominator is 16 more than that. And we are told that that is equal to 80%, which is 8 over 10, which is 8 over 10. Let's cross multiply, so we're going to get 10 times n equals 8 times n plus 8 times 16. Just leave it like that, don't waste your time trying to figure that out right now, it's too early for that. Let's subtract 8n from both sides, so we're going to get 2n equals 8 times 16. Divide both sides by 2, 2 goes out and it becomes 8, and now it's very easy to figure it out. Everybody knows the squares, 8, 8, 8 times 8 is 64, so it is 64. But don't be hasty. This is not our answer, this is the numerator. We're looking for denominator. And denominator is 16 more than that. So denominator is going to be our numerator 64 plus the 16. Don't forget that part. Plus the 16, and I'm getting something very weird. I'm getting 80. I hope 80 is one of the answer choices. And 80 is answer choice D, number 74. Let's keep on moving. Number 75. In number 75, we are told that we get paid, we are told that we get paid two dollars per unit, two dollars per unit, up to 40 units. So we are assembling some units and our, our compensation is two dollars for every unit that we assemble, up to 40 units. Anything more than 40 units, if we assemble more than 40 units, we get 250 for each unit or anything more than 40, 40 plus. The question is, we are further told, we are further told that we assembled at least, at least 30 units on each of the two days. This is a summary of it. The, the pro problem is it is stated in the book, it's a little bit more elaborate. We are further told that we got paid total of $180. The question simply is what is the greatest greatest possible number of units assembled in one day. What is the greatest number of units they could, that we could have assembled in one day given the fact that we are getting paid two dollars per unit to assemble it up to 40 units. Anything more than 40 that we do we get 250 each for the each unit. We worked for two days and we got a total of $180. Let's see what we can do. So let's set it up as day one and day two. Seems, seems logical. Day one and day two. And since, since we want the greatest number of units assembled in one day, 
and we are told that we assembled at least 30 units in each of these days so we have to make at least 30 so let's, this is, let's make this guy 30 units let's make this guy 30 units and for 30 units we're gonna get $60 because we get $2 per unit and here let's assemble 40 units if we assemble only 40 units we're gonna get $80 as we can clearly see, because it's two dollars per unit, as we can clearly see, sixty plus eighty, sixty plus sixty is one twenty. So this is only hundred. This is only, this is only hundred and forty. This is only hundred and forty dollars. We got paid hundred and eighty dollars, which means that we must have produced more than forty units. Let's say x units. We must have produced more than forty units, x units, for which we got paid two and a half dollars. Are you with me so far? And that's all it is. That's all there is. That's all there is. And since one more time, since this is sixty dollars for the first day, we made thirty units. For the first forty units, in the second day, we got eighty dollars. Sixty plus eighty is one forty. Altogether, we got one hundred eighty. So this must represent forty dollars. This must represent forty dollars. That's all it is. Two and a half x equals forty. X must equal. X must equal forty. 40 divided by two and a half. Let's write down our two and a half as five halves. And let's uh, bring it up. So it's 40 times two over five, divide top and bottom by five. 40 is eight, five, there we go. 16, x equals 16. Again, don't stop at that. If 16 happens to be one of the answer choices, don't make a mistake of doing, not completing the work that we are told here. I hope 16 is not one of the answer choices. 16 is not one of the answer choices. 16 is the number of hours that we work in excess of 40 is 40 plus x. The question is what is the greatest number of units that we can make in one day? The answer is 40 plus 16. 40 plus 16, 40 plus 16 is 56 units. 40 plus, 40 plus x is 56 units is the greatest number of units that, that we could have made under the scenario that is presented to us. Number 75 was, no, that, that was number 75. Let's look at number 76. Number 76. Number 76 simply says, which is greatest? Which one of these five quantity is greatest? And the five quantities are 10 times root 3, 10 times root 3. And before we go any further in answer choice B, C, and D, all, all of that, let me just stop here for a second. I would like you to watch a video, a video that you will look for, watch. T's math day three. The search for it. The search for it and, and YouTube just type in T's as in, as in plural of T. Don't worry about what it is. Don't worry about what it means. Just type in T E A S T's math day three. If the video does not pop up, put in my name next to it. T's math day three Keshwani and the video will pop up and watch that video where we learn there are some things that we have to know. There are some basic things that you must have at your fingertips that I always remind you. And the basic things that we're talking about here is this. We have to know that the root of 2 is approximately 1.7. Root of 3, root of 3, or rather 1.4. 1.4. Approximately 1.4. Root of 3 is approximately 1.7 and root of 5 is approximately 2.2. .2. When you watch that video you will understand where they are coming from. If you already knew it then that's great. So let's do it out. Let's pick up some speed here. So it's 10 times root 3 which is approximately 1.7. So this guy is approximately 17. That's it. It's approximately 17. Let's go to B. We don't have to figure out the exact value because we're not interested in what these values are. We simply have to be able to recognize which one of them is the greatest. That's all we care about. 9 times root 4, that's very easy. That's just 18. Since this is 18, A is gone because A is already less than that. So, so far the winner is, the winner is B. Let's look at C. C says 8 times root 5. Again, they come in very handy. 8 times root 5, which is 8 times, 8 times 
approximately, not exactly, approximately 8 times 2.2. Do it out here, 22 times 8 is 16, carry 1, 16 plus 1 is going to be 17, so it's 17.6. This guy is approximately 17.6. As you can see, 17.6, and this is only 18, that rules out C. Answer is not C. So far the winner is, so far the winner is B. Let's look at D. Let's look at D. D says 7 times root 6. Okay. That one, that one I want to do it separately here. Remember, the B was 18. B was 18. 7 times, 7 times root 6. And how much is root 6? If somebody were to ask you how much is root 6 approximately, can you answer it? Well, do you know? Of course you do know, what I'm about to tell you, you already know. Square root of 625, how much is square root of 625? I hope you know, it's 25. Because 25 squared is, 25 squared is 6, 625. Let me write 25 like that. Which means, okay, stay with me in the story, it's very important. Which means, the square root of 6.25 must be 2.5. Square root of 6 and a quarter, the square root of 6 and a quarter is exactly equal to 2.5. Simple things like this, they come in very handy. So what this tells us is that this is, square, this is not square root of 6 and a quarter, this is square root of 6, which means this is 7 times 2.5, 7 times 2.5 would have been, 7 times 2.5 would have been, 2 times 7, 2 times 7 is 14, and half of 7 is 3.5, so that's 17 and a half. So this quantity, whatever it is, is less than 17 and a half. Whatever it is, we don't care what it is. Whatever it is, is less than 17 and a half. Which means this guy is gone. Because B was already 18, if you remember. B was already 18. Let's look at answer choice E. E says 6 times root 7. 6 times root 7, we know root 7 is less than 3. Root 7 obviously is worth less than 3. So 6 times something less than 3, 6 times something less than 3 would have to be less than 18. That's all. He is gone. The only guy standing in the, in the ring right now, the only, uh, the only contender right now left is B. The answer is B. That was number 76. Just give me a little break here. That was number 76. Let's do... The answer choice A was 10 root 3, answer choice B was 9 root 4, answer choice C was 8 root 5, answer choice D was 7 root 6, and answer choice E was 6 root 7. Let's do the same question again. Let's do the same question again, but a little bit differently. Okay? This is the Okay, a little bit different. For example, if you, I hope you will agree that 7 is more than 5. If 7 is more than 5, then 7 squared must be more than 5 squared. Isn't it? And since, and since we are only interested, we are not interested, I already told you three times, or twice at least, we are not interested in knowing what these quantities are. We don't care what they are exactly, we just want to know which one is the greatest. So, if seven squared is more than if seven is more than five, seven squared is going to be more than five, which means whichever is the great, whichever is the greatest quantity among these five is if you square every every one of them, if you square every one of them, whichever is the greatest quantity among these five will remain the greatest. Nothing will change. And this will help us get rid of this square root sign. So let's find out. Ten squared is one hundred, and square root of square root of three squared is three. So it's just, it's just 300, it's very simple. This is going to be 81 times 4. 81 times 4, let's do it out here. 81 times 4 is 4. Eight three, this, is 300, this is 324, remember it. This is 324. This is 8, this is going to be 8, or rather 64. 64 times 5. 64 times 5. Okay, very quickly. 64 times 10, listen carefully, 64 times 10 is 640, that we do know. If 64 times 10 is 640, if 64 times 10 is 640, then 64, 64 times 5 must be 320. 
is 320, this is 324, C is gone. Let's keep on moving. 7 squared is 49, 49 times 6. We know, we know that 50 times 6 is 300. And how do I know that 50 times 6 is 300? Because I know, I, I, I'm, I'm quick, I'm bright, I know that 100 times 6 is 600. If 100 times 6 is 600, then 50 times 6 must be 300. This is 49. We have 49 sixes, not 50. This is a 49 sixes, so which means this quantity, 49 times 6, whatever it is, must equal to 300 minus 6. It's not even 300. We are up to 324 already. D is one. Let's do the last one. It is 36, 36 times 7. 36 times 7. Let's do it out here. 36 times 7. Let's find out what that is very quickly. 30 times 7 is 210, and 6 7 is 42. As you can see, that thing doesn't even add up to 300. The answer is B, of course, answer is B, because answer was B before, it's not going to change anything. Let's do the very last one, number 77. Number 77. Don't forget to watch these three videos. These is a different exam. It's an exam that people have to take in the US to get in a nursing college and I teach that, that, that one also and I made some videos for those and you will find it helpful. Number 70 Number 77, the very last one on the page. Number 77 says that B left eight at 8 o'clock going east at 20 miles per hour Pay attention as you're reading the problem. The story begins with B. The problem tells us with B. They don't start with A. They're trying to be cute. So just stay with that. Don't, don't try to write A first, otherwise you're going to get confused. Always write your information in the same order that appears in the, in the problem. Don't try to uh, go around all over. A, A, we are told, left at 11 o'clock. A left at 11 o'clock, three hours after this guy left. And he's going west at 40 miles per hour. We are told that right now they are 20, 240 miles apart. 240 miles apart. The question simply is what time is it right now? What time is it right now if B left at 8 o'clock in the morning going east at 20 miles an hour, three hours later A started driving in the westward direction at 40 miles an hour, and we are told at this point in time they are 240 miles apart. What time is it right now? Let's find out, shall we? Well, in the first three hours, in the first three hours, from 8 to 8 to 11, in the first three hours, you see B already started driving. From for the first three hours, B drives 60 miles. B drives 60 miles because he's going 20 miles an hour. So by 11 o'clock in the morning, he has already gone 60 miles going east. 60 miles going east by 11 o'clock in the morning. It is at that time, it is at that time that A starts driving, which means, which means that uh, they have to drive 240 minus 60, 180 miles, which means they have driven 180 miles beginning with 11 o'clock in the morning. That's where the story begins. At 11 o'clock in the morning, they have, from that point on, from, from 11 o'clock in the morning until now, they have, driven, they have driven 180 miles. And we also know, and we also know that this guy is going at 20 miles an hour, and this guy is going 40 miles an hour. Their combined speed is 60 miles per hour, which means every hour they're getting 60 miles apart and they have to go on 180 miles. They're going 60 miles apart, they have to go on 180 miles, which means it's three hours. It is three hours. It is now, it is now three hours after 11 o'clock. Because that's when, that's when A left. Three o'clock after, three hours after 11 o'clock, it is now, it is now 1400 hours or 2 p.m. That was the end of the page. I'm going to stop right here. We'll meet again tomorrow, obviously. 
and we'll do some data sufficiency problems. So as I said in the beginning of the video, if you wish to get hold of me, you can reach me at Kashfani Prep at iCloud.com, send me an email, and we'll see what we can do. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.